Getting answers for Western Massachusetts. This is Western Mass News. We continue to follow breaking news out of Springfield where crews are battling a house fire on Bay Street. A live report for you coming up. This bill represents a historic, historic victory for the American people. Direct stimulus payments are a step closer to reaching those struggling during the pandemic. We have the breaking details next. It's been over a month since Aiden Blatchard went missing. I'm Brissy Landerede with details on where the search stands across state lines. We continue following breaking news out of Springfield. Crews are still on the scene of a house fire on Bay Street. Thanks for joining us, everyone, on this Wednesday. I'm Chris Pisano. And I'm Jordan Jagalinzer. Our Western Mass News crew has been on that scene since the fire first broke out hours ago. That's where we find Western Mass News reporter Lindsay Kane, who joins us now live with more. Lindsay? in Jordan. The fire is out now, but the damage is extensive. Now you can see the whole front of this house and the side of this house is completely charred. And you can see holes firefighters actually cut into the side of this house so they could get a better handle on the flames. Luckily, everyone did make it out safely, but one firefighter is suffering from minor injuries. He was cut by some broken glass. Now this was the scene when Western Mass News cameras first arrived just before 4 p.m. And you can see just how thick that smoke was and how much it fogged the entire road. I spoke to a neighbor on scene who tells me he first saw the flames and immediately sprung into action. I was in the uh, living room with my mom watching TV. We heard like cracking and popping. I look out the window and the whole house next door is on fire. So I ran out the house. I ran next door, tried to get everybody out. Luckily, everybody did get out on time. He says someone across the street saw the flames and ran over with a ladder to help rescue someone who was trapped on the second floor. That person climbed out of the window to safety. Now, the cause of this fire still remains under investigation, and as of right now, Bay Street still remains closed at this time. Live in Springfield, Lindsay Kane, Western Mass News. Lindsay, thank you for that live report. And now to more breaking news, this out of Capitol Hill. The next COVID-19 relief bill is a step closer to bringing aid to struggling Americans. The House voting to approve President Biden's $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan, finalizing the changes made by the Senate last week. The bill will provide, among other things, direct payments of up to $1,400 per person for families earning less than $160,000 per year and individuals bringing home less than $80,000 a year. All that's needed to begin processing those payments is the president's signature. He's expected to sign it later this week. Questions, though, remain after the state informs school districts they're expected to get elementary and middle school students back inside the classrooms by next month. This is causing some tension among local school leaders. Western Mass News reporter Kayla Burton joins us now in studio after getting answers as communities plan to bring students back in person. Kayla? Yeah, Chris and Jordan, mixed feelings tonight as school districts work on plans to get students back in the classroom full time. Now in West Springfield, one school board member felt obligated to speak out during last night's meeting. I'm not gonna sit here and just let the commissioner's thing go and say I'm excited to get kids back to school. Tensions visibly high during the West Springfield School Committee meeting Tuesday night when one of the members, William Garvey, interrupted the discussion about plans to get students back to in-person learning. A directive put out by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education Commissioner Jeff Riley hours earlier. I will not continue in this meeting in this manner. I'm fine, I'm fine to leave. You can, you can finish your business. That's great. Then Garvey left the Zoom meeting. West Springfield Mayor Will Reichel also attended the meeting. He tells Western Mass News he understands the frustration. There are questions that, that Mr. Garvey wants answered and parents. I've heard from parents do that. That want more clarification of what's going to happen when we go back. But Reichel is optimistic. When we shifted into hybrid back in February, we kind of had the understanding that we wanted to be fully in person at some point before the end of the year. Um, you know, it, like I know, with all things, it, it sucks being kind of told what to do, per se, but I do think this will help us get to back to fully in person. Uh, and I see April 5th as a good day. Garvey doesn't agree. I, we caught up with him on Wednesday. To say that every school in Massachusetts is going to be back in session full on Monday, April 5th is so short-sighted that he, it, there's plenty of schools that are that that will work fine, that will. I'm, I'm confident. But what, what to show for me is what he's so short-sighted is, 
is what school buildings look like in Massachusetts. In Springfield, school superintendent Daniel Warwick is focused on getting a waiver from the state. We're going to apply for a hybrid, which should be two to three days, because we're fully remote right now. The commissioner has indicated that districts that are fully remote, that if they wanted to start hybrid, he would give them a waiver to do that. But Warwick tells Western Mass News the plan to get students back in the classrooms is underway. We're still uh, working on the collective bargaining piece, but our plan is to open up for our pre-K to five students. We're going to include sixth grade in that group coming back on April 5th. And we're also going to have our first group that we always wanted to return to school as soon as possible. Our high needs special ed students, our ELL life students, and our vocational students at Putnam. Now, I'm told Springfield schools should know in about a week whether their waiver is approved. Meanwhile, the West Springfield School Committee has scheduled another meeting to discuss their in-person learning plan on Tuesday. Live in studio, Kayla Burton, Western Mass News. Kayla, thank you for that live report. The Department of Public Health releasing today's COVID-19 data. The state positivity rate over the last seven days sits at right around 1.77%. There have also been 53 new deaths due to the coronavirus. And so far, more than one and a half million Massachusetts residents have received one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. There are approximately 6.8 million people who live in the Bay State. For a full look at the numbers, you can check out our free Western Mass News streaming app. This is uh, the one year anniversary of the signing of the of the executive order here in Massachusetts. Governor Charlie Baker getting emotional today, marking one year since the coronavirus pandemic took hold of the Bay State. The governor reflecting on how far the Bay State has come in the past 12 months. Hospitals overwhelmed with patients, businesses forced to close, students learning from home. One stark difference between March of 2020 and March of 2021 our access to vaccines, the governor calling them the light at the end of the tunnel. When new appointments open up tomorrow morning, there will be around 40,000 new first dose slots up from 12,000 last week. And starting Friday, residents will be able to start pre-registering for appointments online. The latest now on the search for a missing 11 year old boy from Chicopee. Connecticut authorities joined the efforts this morning as members of Aiden Blanchard's family cross the state border looking for him as well. Western Mass News reporter Brisetta Landaverde joins us live now in Enfields, Connecticut, with details on where the search now stands. Brisetta? Good evening, Chris and Jordan. The Connecticut State Police had divers in the Connecticut River heading from South Windsor to Enfield. They had to stop their search for today due to conditions in the river. A month after her son went missing in Chicopee, Michelle Blanchard continues looking in the waterways for Aiden. On Wednesday, family members extended their search over state lines, gathering at the Donald W. Barnes launch in Enfield, Connecticut. Michelle tells Western Mass News, despite the painful circumstances, her family is in need of answers. It's important because it's so up in the air. Um, I think we need to have closure. I think his younger brother and sister need that. The Connecticut State Police had divers searching the Connecticut River from South Windsor to Enfield on Wednesday. Our Western Mass News Sky Drone getting a look from above. Major Sean Corey, who's in charge of the emergency unit for the state police, tells Western Mass News conditions in the river halted the search. We found out that the conditions of the river, they were so low that they were they didn't need to use the side scan sonar because they could actually visibly see the bottom of the river. We still have an area that we still need to go up and search that's closer to the Massachusetts Connecticut border that we were not able to access today. The divers were able to get within three miles of the Connecticut border with Massachusetts. We'll probably end up coming back uh, either tomorrow or Friday to search the upper end of the Connecticut River with that smaller boat. At some point, we're going to utilize our state police helicopter during one of our regular training missions, and we'll check the upper Connecticut River as well. Michelle is calling on the public to help when safely possible. If anybody's out, you know, the, in the area along the Connecticut River, they have binoculars or they just look out, you know, those that live by the river, just look out the window every once in a while and see if you spot something. 
and Major Corey extends his condolences to the Blanchard family and the community beyond, but he is reminding everyone to stay off the river and let the police conduct their search. For now, reporting in Enfield, Bruce Adelanda Verde for Western Mass News.